OpenAI launched a bunch of chat GPT plugins. And I don't know if you saw it, but David Sachs wrote a blog post with chat GPT. It's an amazing back and forth. I read this back and forth. Explain what you did, Sachs. This was really right. like one of the best conversations I've seen with ChatGPT. I'll pop it up here on the screen, but explain yeah. what you did. Well, I had an idea for a blog post about the use of a, I guess, tactic you could call give to get. I thought it would be an interesting tactic for AI startups to use if they're trying to get a hold of proprietary training data. So, for example, if you wanted to create a, an architect AI, you need a lot of plans. Or if you're going to create like a doctor AI, you need a lot of lab results or medical reports to train the AI on. And those are hard to get. Open AI doesn't necessarily have them yet. So there is an opportunity, I think, for startups to create these AIs in different, you call them professional verticals. So the give to get technique would be you give points to your users for uploading that data, and then they can spend those points by using the AI. And anyway, the, the company that came up with this give to get tactic was a company called Jigsaw almost 20 years ago. No one remembers this company. I'm kind of dating myself because I remembered it. But I, I just had you, this yeah. idea, gee, I wonder if the Jigsaw approach could be used for AI startups. So I started by going into ChatGPT and I said, hey, have you heard of Jigsaw? And then it had. And then I said, tell me about its give to get you know, approach. And then I said, would this approach work for AI startups that want proprietary training data sets? And I said, yes, this is a good idea. And then I gave the architect example. And I said, can you give me more examples like this? And it gave me like 20 more examples. And then I asked it just to flesh out various kinds of details. I went down some cul-de-sacs that I didn't use. And then at the end, I said, can you summarize everything we've just talked about in a blog post? And it gave me the first draft of a blog post. I then did a substantial amount of editing on most of the blog posts, although some of it I just used verbatim. And then I had a couple of people in my firm look at it. They made some good suggestions. So it's not like the human's completely out of the loop. And then I copy and pasted my edited version back into ChatGPT, said, here's my edit. And then I asked for some suggestions. It made a few small edits. And I said, okay, great. Just incorporate the edits yourself. Gave me that final output. And then I posted on Substack. A blog that probably would have taken me a week to research and write, if I had done it at all, I was able to do in a day. And I can't see myself going back now. I think this is just how I'm going to write all my blog posts is, is use ChatGPT as my researcher, as a writing partner, some cases an editor, but I'm definitely going to run it through. The thing that I was struck by was just how kind <laughs> and generous and thoughtful this conversation was. And I just thought, I've never seen Sachs have a conversation where he was so kind to the other person and thoughtful. Right about now, all your friends and family are like, how do we get Sachs to have this conversation with us? You were super kind to the AI. Because it's not a person. It was a robot. Oh, no. <laughs> well, just in case it takes over the world, J. Cal, you can't be too, too, too careful. But no, I think, listen, it's important to give the AI. <laughs> Look at he's so kind. Look he's like, perfect. Oh, perfect. Look, thanks. perfect. Thanks. Thanks. No, no. I wanna, I've, 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 I've this never this. once gotten a thanks from Sachs. Well, when have you ever used an example, exclamation actually. part? Scroll up and show that example. The AI actually gave me some information about Jigsaw's point system. Again, the, the rewards that they used. Yeah. And it was just in text. So I said down below, hey, can you spit that out as a table? And Boom. it did instantly. Perfectly. It's like a day's work, right? Like you would have to have yes. an analyst or researcher do a day's work. It's incredible. And, uh, and then I just screenshot of that and I made it an exhibit. But you in also my said thank post. you. Well, and then yeah. it was like delightful back to you. I mean, this is yes. a, this is a road. Back to me. This is a literal road to you being a kind <laughs> human being. Like all the money that you've spent <laughs> on therapy and just trying coaching to be nice to people. You're just nice naturally no, to robots. I think this Cal, gives me I think Cal, Sachs is in a good mood today. I don't know why you're instigating him. <laughs> He's laughing. Come on. It's funny. You have to admit it's funny, is... Sachs saying thank you to the AI. <laughs> Perfect. This is confirmatory Perfect, of what we thanks. know. David wants to live in a set of highly transactional relationships, ideally with a machine, <laughs> 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 who can then eventually help him make him money. <laughs> can I ask you a question? Though? Sincerely, Sachs. Did you, what did you enjoy more? Working with your team of humans on this or working with ChatGPT, oh, which one was answer. more enjoyable for you, just personally? Well, I think they both were. I, I would say that the human contributions were essential. So okay. basically, what did you enjoy I, more? it's not about enjoyment. It's just, you know, it's about, this is a, just a job to get done. But, 
but it definitely sped things up enormously. I, I personally find the hardest part of writing a blog is when you're staring at that blank sheet of paper and just having to like spit out the first thousand words. Yes. Yeah, it's just so time consuming to do that. But again, if you start with the first draft, even if it's not very good, then you can just edit it and That's it speeds ideation. things up a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's great for ideation. But the contributions now, did you of have people in my firm were, were important. Yeah. I actually trusted it. I, I know that you probably should fact check it in a way because it can hallucinate, but the things that we're saying made so much sense to me that I didn't think it was hallucinating. Well, this is a great moment to pivot into what OpenAI did with plugins. These came fast and furious this week, and a bunch of folks who had, you know, started verticalized, chat GPT based projects, MVPs were like, oh, maybe my project MVP is now dead because. Instacart, OpenTable, Shopify, Slack, Zapier, and Zapier, obviously, like if then this, then that is a very wide ranging tool that allows you to connect APIs from a multitude of uh, sources. And what this all lets you do at the end of the day is have ChatGPT ping one of these sources, just like an app might do or uh, some custom software might do, ping the API and return data. So, hey, what tables are open on OpenTable? Maybe Shopify, mm, find me uh, things to buy in this category, etc. And so people have started building little scripts. We used to call these uh, when Magic Leap was out, uh, internet agents. And the concept of a software agent, that's existed for a long time, actually, in computer science. I'm sure Freeberg will give us some examples of that. But also ChatGPT can now use a browser. So that means you can get around the dated nature of the content in the corpus. Somebody did things like, hey, build me a meal plan, book me a reservation for Friday night in open table, source other ingredients and buy it for Saturday night on Instacart and then use something like Wolfram Alpha to, you know, calculate the calories, etc. So when you saw all this drop, Sachs, what did you think in terms of the opportunity for startups and to build these intelligent agents, things that will do if then, if this, then that, or just background tasks over time, and you could actually leave them running. Yeah. I mean, I think this is the most important developer platform since the iPhone and the launch of iOS and the App Store, and I would argue maybe ever in our industry, certainly since the beginning of the internet. I think there was a question when... ChatGPT launched on November 30th, and people start playing with in December, what exactly OpenAI's product strategy was going to be. Was this just like a proof of concept or a demo? And they even kind of called it like a demo. And initially, it looked like what their business model was going to be was providing an intelligence API that other websites, other applications could incorporate. And we saw some really cool demos like that Notion demo of other applications incorporating AI capabilities. And so initially, it looked like what OpenAI was going to be was more like Stripe, where in the same way that Stripe made payments functionality available very easily through a developer platform, they were going to make AI capabilities available through their developer platform. And then I think a funny thing happened on the way to this announcement, which is they became the fastest growing application of all time. I'm talking about ChatGPT over 100 million users in two months. Nobody else has ever done that before. I think it took the iPhone, you know, two years plus. Gmail, Google, those products all took, I think, well over a year. So this became the fastest growing site of all time. And I think with plugins, what they're indicating is that they will become a destination site. This is not just a developer platform. This is a destination site. And through plugins, they are now incorporating the ability to basically you know, anything you could do through an application, you will now be able to do through a plugin. You'll just tell ChatGPT what you want done. If you say, hey, book me a plane ticket on this date, it will go into Kayak's plugin and do that. You say, book me a plane ticket and then an Airbnb so for this trip. So the promise of Siri and Alexa realized because those were very rigid. They had no intelligence. 